And uh, to get things going, um, start off with a, a quick little story is uh, I heard earlier this afternoon, um, uh, Jeremy Off, we've all been in class with Jeremy Off yet? Excellent. He uh, came up to Hal one day and said, uh, you know, Hal, I am, I'm a huge fan. I, I just, I really love your dancing. I think you're an amazing dancer, totally inspired. And, you know, Hal said, thank you. How do you say my last name? If you're such a big fan, you know how to pronounce my last name. And Jeremy was... Take care? Take care? And I was like, nope. Turn around and walk away. So the first question is going to be, how do we say your last name, Arch? Take care. Take care. Take care. care. It's Armenians. I'll give you the microphone. <laughs> I don't need the microphone. It's really Takarian. All Armenians have an I A N on the end of their name. So I guess when his dad came here about seven or eight years old, took the I A N off. So his name is Take Care. Excellent. So now I know. I, I, I was one of those that never knew how to correctly pronounce the last name. So excellent. All right. So Marge uh, was. Uh, one of the DJs at Bobby McGee's, uh, and Bobby McGee's uh, is, is no longer around, but was the, uh, the, the preeminent place to dance um, starting in the 70s, the late 70s up through just a few years ago. Um, and it's kind of was home of the, the resurgence, or not even the resurgence, the continuation of the dance from the origination and then in through the, uh, the terrible disco years. Um, trying to keep it alive and trying to keep it around for all of us to then uh, to enjoy. And so Marge was um, the one that was really responsible for playing all the music and, and helping to, to drive the scene uh, through uh, DJing at Bobby McGee's. Um, so now, why don't, why don't you tell everyone, like, so when did you start dancing, though? So you, because you, you started dancing first, like in, in the 50s? I started dancing about 19, 54, 55, I was learning. I'll tell you how I learned. I used to go to the little ballroom on the pipe in Long Beach. And I saw this uh, girl up in the front of the ballroom dancing with these two guys. And I thought, wow, what is that? So I went up and sat down. They didn't have tables, but just chairs. And I watched her feet. And that's how I learned, by watching her feet. I learned the basic. And then when, I, of course, I met Hal, I had to learn his throw out, which was a little different than what you people do. Hal was always different than anybody else. And uh, I got a little better, but I had to learn because when I started dating Hal, he said, uh, you want to go with me? You're going to learn to dance. Because he says, I'm going to dance. He said, you're going to sit on the sidelines and watch, or you're going to sit at home. I'm going to dance. Well, I wasn't going to do the either, so I learned to dance. And it's probably the best thing i ever done. Uh, it made our marriage better. How many things can you do with the guys? So now, um, so Bobby McGee's, when, when did Bobby McGee's start? We actually, I think, started about 1978 or 79 at Newport, Bobby McGee's. That was when Bobby McGee's was really growing. They were building Bobby McGee's everywhere. You couldn't go anyplace and not go Bobby, Bobby for, those, for those not around, Bobby McGee's is um, it's a restaurant. Uh, with a bar, it's kind of like a Cracker Barrel um, or a better Denny's. <laughs> you know, they, they had a, a restaurant in, 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 in a bar, and the one in uh, Brea had a dance floor as well, right? They all had, they all had a little dance floor. And then wasn't, didn't, wasn't it the, the waiters and waitresses theme, they dressed in costume? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it was just, it was a restaurant that also had a place to go dancing. Uh, and there was a lot of them all around uh, Southern California at least. Are they still, I know that the one in Brea is closed, but are all of them gone now? Do we know? Uh, probably. 
probably, yeah. We got invited to quite a few of the openings of the new Bobby McGee's because we were like a staple. I think people thought we were part of their entertainment. That <laughs> we were there so much. So now you DJ at Bobby McGee's, and how did you uh, how did you start DJ there at Bobby McGee's? Uh, I would help their disc jockey. They had they had two tape decks. They had two record players, and they had two CD players, so you could play any of them. I had tapes. I had tapes. Tapes. Newport, it would be playing all records. So that was 1978, 79. There were no CDs. Right. So records, for those of you who are a little, uh, <laughs> you know, round, they look like frisbees. You could throw them and they were flat. Not a lot of these. They're kids today. You know, they don't, they don't know these things. Yeah, they had what they call 33 and a third, which were the long playing albums. And we had started buying these albums for years and years and years. You got to remember that when you buy. Uh, um, if you have a tune that you really like and you go out and you look for the, this tune on the album, you don't know if it's the arrangement that you like. Because Numbers, Basie has recorded uh, a one o'clock jump, oh, how many times? Sometimes with uh, different musicians uh, at different studios and they never play the number identical to the way they recorded it maybe the first time because musicians play solos different if they play a solo they will never be able to play that solo ever again note for note because they're not playing from a sheet of music they're playing from here and from here so when you find a record of a number that you like and the arrangement that you like, if they've never copied that on a CD, you've got to buy it from a record. So a lot of my long playing albums have never been put on CDs. So what you're getting is probably a completely different arrangement. And tunes vary from the arrangement. So, so uh, going to, to music, who, who was your favorite band? My favorite band, not that I didn't love all of them, because I did. They all played great stuff, and they played some stuff that you didn't like. <laughs> but my favorite band was Cal Macy, because I love that rhythm section. I like that drive. Uh, Hal's favorite band, of course, was Benny Goodman and Artie Shaw. Uh, yeah, Count, Count Basie had the, uh, historically and up through today and probably into forever, will have the, uh, what is known as the best rhythm section to have ever been created. And, and a rhythm section in a big band is the piano, the drums, the bass, <laughs> and a guitar. And the Count Basie rhythm section, as good as all the other ones are, his rhythm section could never be beat and will never be beat. And Count Basie is one of my, one of my favorite bands. Now, did you ever meet Count Basie? Uh, yeah. I Do, you Do you have proof? Do you have proof that you met Count Basie? Because if you don't have a picture, it didn't, it didn't happen. <laughs> So Count Basie is uh, the guy down here at the bottom, <laughs> and that's Marge over here on the side. We'll pass this around. And, he's autographed, and he's autographed it, so don't steal it. <laughs> so where where did you meet Count Basie? Oh, uh, no, I, I couldn't tell you where the first time I ever met him. Uh, I met him at so many times, but that one, that picture was made out at Disneyland. Count Basie played Disneyland? You name it, I saw all of it. <laughs> um, oh, yeah. 
Who, who else did you see at Disneyland? Woody Herman, Harry Jane, Louis Belson, Buddy Rich, uh, Ray McKinley, Cy Zentner, uh, Artie's band. Artie didn't play, but his band was there. Lionel Hampton, for, for those from last night, played the vibraphone similar to what you heard last night. And last night would, uh, you could argue, was uh, a recreation of uh, some of the Benny Goodman small combo stuff. We had Benny on clarinet, you had Lionel Hampton on vibes, Charlie Christian on guitar, aka, AKA Jonathan Stout, and um, uh, Gene Krupa on drums, which Josh Colazzo is going to be the closest thing that you'll ever hear to Gene. He is an absolutely amazing, amazing drummer. Um, but yeah, Lionel Hampton, I heard that about Lionel, that he was a big performer. He loved being in front of the audience. Mm -hmm. You know, another great little drummer was Butch Miles. Uh, in later years, uh, Basie went through a little period of time there where he wasn't playing very good. And we couldn't figure out why. And it was because he had lost his drummer. And uh, when he booked at Disneyland, uh, we talked to one of the guys out there about how Basie's band sounds. He said, oh, I've never heard Basie sound so good. He's got a new little drummer that will knock you on your ear. And he said his name is Butch Miles. He's a little blonde at a guy. And of course we went to Disneyland and, and you know, to see him. He was something else. Buddy Rich used to say, he was on Merv Griffin's show, and he said that uh, Merv was asking him about uh, uh, some new drummers coming up, and he said, oh man, there's one that, that Basie's got, and he said, he scares me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Buddy, Buddy Rich, so in, in the, uh, the hierarchy of, of jazz or swing drummers, Chick Webb, Gene Krupa, <laughs> Buddy Rich, Louis Belson. So, so for Buddy Rich to give compliments to Butch is uh, quite, a, quite a thing. So now, did you, um, did you, was Duke Ellington, did he ever play at Disneyland? Yes, I did. Yeah? And, and you told me a story about uh, Paul Gonzalez. So, so Paul Gonzalez, and let me tell this part, the back story first. Paul Gonzalez was a, a saxophone player, and in the Babo community, He's most famous for the song Diminuendo in Blue and Crescendo in Blue, also known as the 14-minute song, also known as the I Hate You, Kyle song. <laughs> if anyone's been to ABW, you know what I'm talking about. And I don't know if we're going to be able to play it this weekend, but if you ever do get a chance to hear it, if you're just patient with it, it is well worth the dance, even though it is 14 minutes. Um, so Paul Gonzalez is very famous on that track. It comes from uh, Live in Newport, 1956, and he played 27 blues choruses in a row, and it equivocates to about a nine minute solo, which is absolutely just astounding. So, so Paul Gonzalez is at Disneyland. Yeah, Duke was, yeah, Duke was at Disneyland, and Paul found out that Mary Collins uh, was, had a little bit of the same nationality as him. I don't know what that was, <laughs> but he decides, he's got his sax in his, he decides he's going to serenade Mary Collins. So he's sitting there playing his horn. Now, mind you, got to remember, he's about half soft. <laughs> Drunk. No liquor yeah. was, uh, Booze. Uh, you know, on the premises, but they would bring their booze and go back to the dressing room and have their little shots. So Paul was getting a little uh, wiped out. So he's sitting there playing, and Duke is going back on the bandstand. We said, hey, Paul, I think uh, Duke's looking for you uh, to get on the stage. And he says, oh, let him wait. And he finishes his solo, and he's playing with Mary Collins. And he walks up on the stage, and he sits down in his chair, and he lays his arm across his lap. And he's going, <laughs> And I told how Duke introduces Paul for this diminuendo and crescendo and blue, featuring 
Paul Gonzalez. Featuring Paul Gonzalez. And I told Hal, I said, I don't think he's going to make it. And Hal said, watch him. I said, honey, he's not going to make it. He said, you just watch him. So it was time for him to walk up on the, to the microphone. He gets up, he walks up to the microphone, he starts blowing, and he blows, and he blows, and he blows. And when he finishes, he goes back and he sits down, puts the horn across the horn across his lap, and he goes, <laughs> So now, um, back to going back to Bobby McGee's. Uh, what uh, what type of music would you play uh, for the dancers at Bobby McGee's? Probably a lot of what you probably play. Uh, uh, a lot of the real up tempo stuff. I didn't play a lot of it because you got to remember we were old <laughs> <laughs> by this time. You know, if you were 40, 45 years old and younger, you're all young things to us. We couldn't keep up with that tempo anymore. But uh, I, I played it on, I played all of it. Yeah. I like, I wasn't just strictly uh, a big band. I like good blues. Uh, I was a big Joe Williams fan, a Lou Rawls fan. Uh, you know, there's good music. Big Joe Turner? Uh, some <laughs> Joe Turner. I, 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 I really like Joe Williams a lot better than Joe Turner. And Joe Williams sang with uh, Count Basie. Count Basie. Which is why she likes him. Oh. <laughs> yeah. So now, if you, could, uh, if you could name five of your most, or, or a few of your most favorite songs that you ever played at Bobby McGee's, do you, do you think you could do that for us? Wow. Or memorable, or the songs that would just get everyone dancing, or <laughs> Well, uh, I had Lionel Hampton's uh, uh, Flying Home from his uh, uh, 50th, I believe it was his 50th anniversary. You know, Lionel never, they never made a real great uh, album of Lionel Hampton. I, the black bands didn't get the the things that the white bands got in the studios. The the, the great studios, the great equipment, so that has a lot to do with how those numbers are recorded, of course. And when he did that 50th anniversary, I think it was probably the best sounding album that Lionel ever made. I think I, think I have a part. And it's a... Uh, his flying home on that. And then I, uh, Hal knew Illinois Jackette. And Illinois, Illinois Jackette was the one that made that passage that you hear on flying home. Da 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 da, da 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 da. Well, he originated that. So all musicians play that passage. Um, Sorry, I'm just looking for it right now, Marge. Oh, here we go. Is this, uh, is this the one? Well, most of, most of them are like... I don't know, they're, they're both very similar. The one that I like is, is the one uh, after so many minutes, uh, Illinois and Daniel takes off on that side. And it's a little different, isn't it? And when I played for the first time in Bobby McGee's, all the youngsters went bananas <laughs> over that re recording. And I said, in fact, they tried to find it and couldn't find it, couldn't buy it. So I made them some copies. I think I made uh, one for Tip. Yep. And uh, there was three or four people that I made them a copy of. So in, in, in the DJ world, um, you know, we all know that, that every every aspect of life has that white whale. Marge's music collection is the white whale for the DJs. She's got stuff that no one else has. 
And if she gives it to anyone like Tip, I never knew that Tip got that from, from her. Because Tip won't tell you. And he won't give it to you. And if anyone gets music from Marge, they don't give it to you. So it's, uh, I think, uh, hopefully right now, my ninja assassins are um, stealing your records while you're away from home. Because <laughs> so, I don't have any of the stuff that Marge has on, on record, on vinyl. Yeah, and they've never, they've never put any of those, or reissued any of those albums on CDs. You probably couldn't get it. Right, right. Yeah, it's real tough. There's a lot of it out there, but not, not everything. Not everything. Um, so now, what um, what would you when when, uh, when you think of Babola music? How would you describe Babola music? What is Babola music to you? Up tempo. Yeah. Up tempo. <laughs> Movers. Real quick. Yeah. Numbers that move. And like big band swing, right? Big bands. Yeah. Artie Shaw and mm -hmm. Count Basie and the like. Right. And what about like uh, Dixieland? I'm not crazy about this. <laughs> That's a great answer. You should all take heed to that. <laughs> Trad jazz? Well, you know, Balboa dance is a smooth dance. You have to feel that dance. It's body contact. No wonder how I like that. <laughs> <laughs> but you, you have to feel the Balboa. So now you, you, you've talked about um, the difference between this music and you dancing to the music, dancing on the beat, or dancing on top of the beat. Right. So can you, can you share that? Um, tap dancers push the beat. I don't know if you know what I mean when I say push the beat. They're on top of the beat. They push the beat. A Balboa dancer. <laughs> We dance on the beat. Some try to dance the bubble on top of the beat. If you dance on the beat, and you dance with someone that dances on top of the beat, you're not together. He's a fraction ahead of you. You'll feel it. 